Hello everyone, I'm Dan. In this video, I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the Jetson Xavier Development Kit. I just got it in yesterday and I'm pretty excited about it. First things first, let's talk about the blue mat that's underneath here. It's an ESD mat, electrostatic discharge mat. Uh, it's very important when working with these, these developers kits there, you know, they'll, that's one of the first things I'll tell you, especially the TX2. I've got my TX2 module out here, uh, just going to bring it out for comparison to the, the Xavier. All right, um, I've also got my wrist strap there, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. And let's go ahead and uh, break the seal and unbox this. Another one down here. All right. Yeah, first thing right off the bat, there it is. Nice little ESD bag. Looks like we've got a little extra padding up there for shipping. Go ahead and open that up. All right, there we are. Set this aside. And let's tell you what, let's move this box over here. Let's rearrange things a little bit better there. Put the TX2 right next to it there. And I think that's a, that's a pretty good layout there. So size-wise, right off the bat, you can see it's got a much smaller footprint than the than its predecessor there. Um, Height-wise, there's actually, believe it or not, not that much of a difference because you know the heat sink sticks up so far on the TX2 there. So maybe maybe like half an inch higher or something like that. Well, it's it's really close, yeah. If even that. So all in all, pretty cool. Much more compact uh, compact design. I definitely like that. Um, Okay, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, I don't feel like there's anything in there. I'm not expecting a whole lot of this. I did my homework on this before there. So let's see what we've got over here. Got a support guide. We got a quick start guide. Let's take a look at the quick start guide here. Um, so it's nice and thin there. I think it's on recycled paper, environmentally friendly. That's pretty good there. Let's see, right in there. Uh, it tells us what the different plugins are. It tells us about the power, force recovery, reset. So that's pretty, pretty good there. Um, tells us, of course, about electrostatic sensitive parts. Connect all peripherals. Ah, yeah. Connect all peripherals before connecting the power supply. So. Pretty pretty standard stuff if you're familiar with the TX2 there, so that's good there. Uh, the support guide, this is much thicker. Let's see what we got. Probably got a bunch of good stuff in that. Let's see, start off with a little support URL, some other languages. Um, electro, electric shock, fire, heat, chemical, anti-static precautions again, right? Um, symbols on the equipment, basically like some, just some basically operating safety stuff there. Um, oh, looks like we've got more languages, different languages, different languages, some stuff. Okay, yep, yep, and that's what we've got in there. So yeah, so it looks like basically the support guide is maybe, uh, you know, two pages in English here, same with the rest there. On, precautions so all right okay what do we got here next oh, looks like we have a USB type A to type C cable it's like we've got a longer one here same thing USB type A to type C uh, the power brick. Okay, very cool. I was uh, I was very curious to see what the output voltage is on this. So I'm gonna bring this up as much as, much as I can. So our output is 19 volts, 3.42 amps. That's interesting. That's I don't know if I'll be able to find kind of a, a power battery pack on Amazon pre-can that I can just you know uh, power this thing with because they got a lot of. Uh, you know, robotic stuff in mind on this here. So uh, that'll be interesting. I might have to build a circuit or something like that. Very cool. 
And then it looks like we've got just the cable that plugs into the power brick, so nothing special there. Nothing in this. It appears to be sealed. And that looks like it's about it. All right, let's go ahead and move the box aside here. Okay, so that was everything that uh, came in there. Now let's, uh, let's just rearrange this stuff here a little bit there and take a look and see what our various connectors do. So obviously, you know, we got our PCI E16 here along the side. So let's see if I can get a good shot on that. Yep, there we go. Uh, it's a little tight on this end, but I think I can make, make that kind of work on there. Um, oh, I can actually see kind of a fan in there. Oh yeah, that's a much better angle. So there's a little fan on inside this heat sink. Um, Jetson module is built into this little heat sink here. And then, okay, so on this side over here, right, um, looks like we've got our power adapter plug in there, right? Nice, fits, fits great there. Above that, um, a USB type C. So let's plug that in there. Yep, sure enough. It's exactly, exactly what we expected there. That's pretty tight. Uh, Ethernet, and then this is a eSATA Plus um, USB 3.1 Type A is what it says. So let's grab this cable here. Yep, sure enough, that plugs in there. So that's pretty cool there. Um, obviously, we have an HDMI port here, and it looks like a little SD card reader up here. Okay. So that's that side of it. Moving on this way here, it says we've got the power button, force recovery, and reset. Pretty straightforward. Let me move that down and make sure I got that shot for you guys to see that. All right, then, so over here, we've got a micro USB, and specifically it says for FTDI serial connection. Okay? And then we got another USB Type C over here. And then right next to it, we've got a little power LED. It's kind of hard to see, but it's in between that and the uh, expansion header here. Okay, so that uh, that's that's pretty cool there. Uh, let's flip it over to the bottom here. And I'm not entirely sure what we've got here. Uh, looks like a camera connector there. Some jumpers of some sort. I'll have to do uh, another tutorial on what's all on this dev board here. When I figure out how to uh, take the thing apart, I don't see, I don't see it. it does, it's not obvious to me right off the bat how this comes apart. I don't see any clips or anything like that. So I'll have to do a little research on that and come back to that in a future tutorial there. Okay, um, I think that pretty much is the down quick and dirty of the unboxing. There's what we've got. Um, pretty cool, I'm excited about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video out, I'm going to plug everything up and then we'll boot this thing up here for the first time. Okay, so now I've got the peripherals hooked up, I've got the HDMI cable, I've got a USB hub with a mouse and keyboard attached to it. There's the mouse, keyboard, so we are set to go there. Now um, this isn't the first time booting this up, I'm kind of bummed, uh, I trusted uh, my brand new GoPro Hero. I thought it, thought it would do a great job of shooting this, but uh, it, unfortunately the screen was kind of blurry and by the time I had booted up, there's some stuff that you have to run, a uh, little, little install script, um, and unfortunately I missed that. Oh well, lesson learned, I'm back to shooting it in 4K from my iPhone, so let's go ahead and talk real quick about um, electrostat discharge again. Once again, you always want to hook up any peripherals before you plug in power. That's something that they can't emphasize enough. So. Let's go ahead and connect the power cable and press the power button. All right, let's go ahead and move up to the screen here. Get that locked in. Okay, got pretty good, pretty good focus in on, on the lettering wording and 
text and stuff there. And one of the things I kind of found unnerving a little bit at first is, is the mouse cursor will appear here in just a second. And then you'll be basically like stuck at this, this gray screen here, right? And I was like, uh-oh, this isn't good. But, uh, you know, give it, uh, give it about oh, 10, 15 seconds and the desktop will actually appear. And there we go. Voila, it's live. All right, let's come up and take a look at files here first. And inside of the home directory, there's this NVIDIA-installer folder here. And that was what we had to basically change directories to at the command, command line there. And then we had to run this installer script right here, and it installed a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I wish I would have gotten good video on that, but honestly, it was just kind of blurry and looked, looked pretty bad. So um, well, with that being said, what we've got here um, is a little bit of examples, but that's just, uh, that has nothing to do with that. We've got the Jets and Clock script here, which is, uh, you know, a nice, they left that one over from the, from the TX2. As a matter of fact, since we're all booted up, let's go ahead and run that and see, see what kind of specs we come up with there. Let's open up Terminal. Expand it out a little bit and, and drag it down. Cover up the whole entire thing there. Let's do an LS. There it is. So let's do a sudo. Jets and clock. So I'm gonna do a dash dash show first so we can check it out and see see what we've got going on here. And let's see, online CPUs. It's a C family Tegra 194 machine, machine Jets and Xavier. That's cool. Um, CPU 0 through 7. So all eight CPUs are at their max frequency right now. Current frequency, max frequency. Uh, the fan is not running uh, at all. And uh, everything is quiet there. The GPU is at its minimum frequency here right now because its current frequency matches the minimum frequency. The max frequency is this here, which is 905,250,000. Current frequency is 114,750,000. It's like the minimum frequency on the EMC is about half. Uh, it's 204 followed by a bunch of zeros is 665. Its maximum is like even more. So anyway, fan speed zero. Let's go ahead and crank it up here and see what happens. And our fan is now running. Might be able to hear that now. Okay. Okay, so yep, so our GPU, our current frequency is in fact the same as the maximum frequency, fan speed 255. So it just must be a single byte value that represents that 0 to 255. 255 is probably its highest speed it can go. Um, yep, the EMC frequency is, is maxed out too as well. So all in all pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that. And go ahead and shut it down. I hope you guys have had fun watching this video. I know I have fun creating it. I've been really excited about the, the Xavier for a while there. And um, that'll pretty much do it. Thanks for watching and take care.